Thank you, Wilson, for the kind words uh, said about me. Um, you have been very kind, uh, very generous in praising mm -hmm. me. I hope I really deserve it. A respected principal, uh, Dr. David Raja Bose, and dear participants, I'm extremely grateful to the organizers for giving me this unique opportunity to interact with uh, around uh, 100 teachers. Yeah, now 100 participants are listening, yes. Um, talking to teachers, interacting with the teachers is a great source of personal and intellectual joy for me because I started my career as a lecturer in Pioneer Kumaraswamy College in Nagar in 1970. And I worked there for seven years. And then I went to Loyola College, Chennai, uh, joined uh, the Loyola College as assistant professor of economics and worked there for three years. And in 1980, I went to the UN. I have great passion for teaching. I enjoyed teaching. And uh, in fact, um, after retiring from the United Nations, I always wanted to go back to teaching. And then I contacted a friend of mine working for the University of Malaya. And I told him that I'm most willing to join University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur as a visiting professor. And he readily accepted. And he paved the way for it. And I was there for three and a half years. Again, I came to Trivandrum, worked as a director of Cardinal Klimis School of Management Studies for one year. Then again, because of UN assignments, I had to go back to Vienna. But uh, I always look forward to uh, interacting with the students, interacting with the teachers. It's a great source of intellectual and personal joy for me, as I said earlier. Now, let me, yeah. Uh, I hope you are all able to see the PowerPoint presentation. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. sir. Okay. I start with uh, changing facets of higher education. As teachers, we should be really aware of the rapidly changing facets of higher education. And we have to keep pace with all those changes. And the world is now undergoing rapid, revolutionary, and complete changes, creating the need for the teachers to keep pace with. This is very important. Change is permanent. If you uh, talk about the world, the Stone Age, uh, even during the Stone Age, changer, changes were taking place in a very primitive way. And then came the Iron Age, the first industrial revolution of the 18th century. And small firms started responding to growing need for goods and services. And so many changes happened at the household sector and at the firm level. And then came Iron Age, and then uh, Carbon Age, and Green Age. And now we talk about COVID age. And the COVID age is completely transforming everything. We tell our students that there is, should be no cell phone inside the college campus. And the college is now in the cell phone. Look at how the whole thing is changed. So these are all changes. And we cannot afford, as teachers, we cannot afford to ignore those changes happening in and around us. We have to monitor it, we have to keep pace with that, and we should see how best we can make use of the changes. In life, each challenge is an opportunity. You know, each challenge is an opportunity. Our personal and professional response to convert challenges into opportunities and opportunities into sustainable sources of wealth creation is a discovery process. We have to discover the process. In order to discover the process, you have to learn. When a child is born, the brain is enveloped by ignorance, complete ignorance. And the child learns a lot from parents, from relatives, and it picks up every day it is learning. And learning is an effective means to erase ignorance that envelops the brain. When the ignorance is completely changed, then the brain can show its real power. So learning is continuous in the sense from birth to death, we continue to learn. Because every time new things are happening, when new developments happen, we cannot close our eyes and keep quiet, as particularly as teachers, because we are the one to profess the knowledge pertaining to any subject. What is currently happening is a transformative shift 
from quantitative increase to qualitative improvements. The programmatic accent, the priority accent is on quality of life. Right now, the topmost priority is on good health, public hygiene, per personal hygiene. So many things are being learned related to these simple facts. What we did not realize for decades, we realize now. So we have to profess knowledge related to that. And the transformative shift is underpinned by determined effort to promote fast growing, job creating green industries. I would say job creating green industries and healthy industries, healthy productive activities and service activities. This is going to be the future of this. The importance of offering degrees with the high level literacy rate, high level of a functional literacy rate. Now what is happening is some states in India enjoy 100% literacy. Take the example of Kerala. We talk about, we are very proud of Kerala. It's very proud that oh, their, their state enjoys 100% literacy rate. But when you look at the rate of functional literacy, the functional literacy rate, it is very low. Functional literacy rate refers to percentage of literates imbued with enhanced adaptive capabilities and skills to use modern technology and to commercialize new knowledge. When you don't have that functional literacy rate, very high level of functional literacy rate. That means when you are not able to use modern technology and devices, and when you are not able to commercialize new knowledge, you cannot be employed. That is why in spite of 100% literacy rate, nearly 80% of the students coming out of colleges, engineering and science and arts colleges, remain in the state of joblessness for years because the functional literacy rate is very low. So we have to offer degrees with a high degree of functional literacy rate. That means the percentage of literates getting the degrees should be imbued with enhanced adaptive capabilities and skills to use modern technology and to commercialize new knowledge. Otherwise, they cannot survive in an internationally competitive environment. And moving away from grossly over-regulated, under-governed system, our educational system is definitely grossly over-regulated, over, over I would say. So many regulations, so many restrictions, but there is no mechanism to ensure good governance. The governance is not governance, educational governance is not monitored properly. Then I, I skipped one point, I will go back to that. Preparing students for employment and not for entry into employment. It's important that we prepare students uh, for employment, not for entry into employment. What is currently happening is we are preparing the students for entry into employment. When a student joins any company, he is not operational on day one. He has to undergo uh, at least six month training program with the company. And then he's eligible there to work. So otherwise, without that six month intensive orientation, if he is not operational, if he is not technically qualified, what is the use of our education? The system of preparing students for entry into employment should be converted into preparing them for directly for employment. On day one, the system should ensure that on day one, they are operational wherever they get a, an opportunity to work. This is a major, major issue, needs a special attention. And priority focus on research and innovation. As you know, uh, the research mindedness of both the students and the teachers is very important. When international organizations visit universities to rank universities and the institutions, the first question in the questionnaire is how many ISA journal articles your staff and students have written during this year. ISA means how the journals recognized by the Institute for Scientific Information. If you, if you are able to publish a journal article and in a journal which is recognized by ISI, then it affixes the quality seal on your professionalism. That means you are really good at it. So there is no compromise on quality for, for accepting your articles to be published in journals recognized by the Institute for Scientific Information. So this is the first question. They don't look at your infrastructure. They don't look at your buildings. They don't look at your utility services. They ask you how many ISI journal articles your students have produced. 
you can say isa equivalence that is the second best that's the second best minimum i will come to that point and discuss everything in detail at a later point then innovation induced entrepreneurship making job seekers job makers particularly as things stand today it is very difficult to get regular employment in any any organization now it's almost impossible so the only way out is to survive as a dynamic entrepreneur knowledge and technology based dynamic entrepreneur that's why i always say that irrespective of any cold start you know botany zoology biology whatever it is at the end of the academic year there should be six month intensive training program on technology and knowledge based dynamic entrepreneurship so with that crash program they may be able to emerge as entrepreneurs even in medical college they should offer that offering highly sophisticated medical treatment at incredibly low price to the poor people is a great great issue if someone is able to do that he is able to capture the niche so irrespective of any course taught at the end of each undergraduate course and at the end of each postgraduate course there should be a six month training program on dynamic entrepreneurship product based product related dynamic entrepreneurship and then they will survey and then we convert job seekers into job makers then increasing interactive uh, uh, framework between institutions and the industry what is happening is a complete lack of interactive framework if you take the example of singapore they have the best national innovation system and uh, in a good national innovation system in an ideal national innovation system new knowledge is generated by institutions exploited by laboratories and commercialized by dynamic firms so such a high degree of interactive framework between institutions laboratories and dynamic firms enables singapore score a very high rank on the scale of industrial performance singapore's industrial uh, uh, the performance is very high and every for more than 25 years consecutive years singapore tops the list and this is a small country with the entry port type of characteristics okay and virtually no resources while other countries are struggling to convert their resource based comparative advantages into competitiveness Singapore is able to enhance global competitiveness of their products without a single resource base by using human ingenuity as the infinite source of wealth creation. This human ingenuity comes from institutions, from teachers. From this, there you can just realize how important effective teaching is, and teachers' mindset is very important. You know, so many changes are happening. so what is the role of the teacher i as i said the minimum is to keep pace with the changes at least in terms of thinking teachers should be one step ahead of this march march towards rapid revolutionary complete changes that really gravitate in and around us so let us just to go to the next one can teachers afford to ignore what is happening around them around the students we'll say in between if there is any question you can stop me you can intervene and ask me to answer the question okay if anybody is sending any question related to the points i said now what is now happening is creative destruction creative destruction is triggered by disruptive technologies during the first industrial revolution we talked about the steam power during the second industrial revolution we talked about mechanical operations and third industrial revolution computer electronics etc etc during the fourth industrial revolution what is happening is destructive technologies just destructive te technologies disruptive technologies are creating what is called creative destruction and what are disruptive technologies advanced design manufacturing systems artificial intelligence additive manufacturing then augmented reality big data management cloud computing then 3d printers then internet of things internet of services internet of electricity energy 
and so many things. I can, I can just uh, provide you with a long list. Now, all these things are changing at the way we live. You know, even in uh, now in the current state of uh, COVID, uh, 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 <coughs> uh, what is happening is we have to talk about saving lives. We have to uh, make interventions to create sustainable sources of livelihood. Then we have to adapt to new style of living and then liberating with the virtual world. There are four L's now, life, then livelihood, lifestyle, then liberating with the, the virtual world. All these things are today facilitated by technological marvels. So whatever subject you teach, you have to, you, you cannot afford to ignore what is happening in and around the major emerging issues, emerging issues of saving life, emerging issues of saving, creating sustainable sources of livelihood, emerging issues of a new style of living. People seem to be content with that. The good thing is, the good thing is people uh, are getting um, acclimatized, very easily acclimatized to the new way of living. This is very encouraging. Very encouraging. People are content with what they have. So this is a very positive development amidst the very sober environment that is prevailing now. Then virtual world, liberating with the virtual world. Everything is happening in the virtual world. Processing, design, marketing, you know, one guy holding a small laptop is networking with 120 vendors to produce 120 different components of your product. The guy does not see the product components. It's all produced across countries and continents. It is assembled some, all these things are assembled somewhere. Eventually the product is produced and sold. <coughs> all that he needs is only just a laptop to be connect for global connectivity. <coughs> he established, excuse me. So because of all these things I say, hence the needs to position teachers uh, in the context of rapidly changing all these three years I just said. Now let me, what is happening? Oh, okay, next one. I used to classify teachers into three types, logical thinkers, aggressive achievers, and gentle helpers. Some teachers are 100% logical thinkers. They are very intelligent. Their aptitude is very high. Every time they are in the library, all the time reading, reading, reading. And in terms of knowledge, no one can beat them. And, but they will be walking around the campus like a great philosophers. 100% logical thinkers, which is bad. Everything else is lousy. They will not even dress properly. They will be just walking along uh, the corridors, like almost like a beggar, to be very honest. I have seen, I have I've seen many teachers. I have seen many teachers like that. Very intelligent people, but they don't even dress properly, which is very bad. Then there are 100% aggressive achievers, behaving like dictators, like Hitler in the class. Whatever he says is right, the students will not be asked to ask, um, allowed to ask any question. And But he is an aggressive achiever in the sense he produces 100% result. And 90% of the 100% may score more than 90%. Great aggressive achiever. No doubt about it. But if he is concentrating only on achieving that 100% result and being very strict with the students, and that's no good. Some are gentle helpers, and they are 100% gentle helpers. They are the most dangerous teachers in the campus. I have seen with my own eyes. You know, these gentle helpers, 100% gentle helpers, they don't want to say no to anybody. They want to be nice with the peer management. They want to be very nice to the colleagues and they want to be very popular among students and these are the type of people who will accept two appointments at the same time in two different places 100 percent uh, uh, gentle helpers an ideal teacher combination is 30 percent logical thinker 30 percent aggressive achiever and 40 percent gentle helper now how does it come normally it evolves over the years then after gaining 10 years of experience or 15 years of experience, <clears throat> one may reach this ideal state of being 30% logical thinker, 30% aggressive achiever, 
and 40% gentle helper. But you cannot make the students suffer for 15 years or 10 years until you reach this position. One has to have this unique blend, unique blend of 30, 30 plus 40 in the beginning so that the students continue to benefit from day one. Um, you know, uh, the, I would even say uh, some teachers take teaching, I kindly don't get offended, but I am just sharing with you what I have seen, particularly in Nagar Kovi. Okay. Uh, some teachers are considering teaching as an occasion. Occasionally, they teach very well. Maybe once in a month, they deliver a fantastic lecture and uh, evaluate uh, the mark, uh, papers and everything. They do a great job. For some teachers, take it as a vacation. Coming to the college is a vacation. And only few people take it as a vocation. So the teaching can be a vacation, occasion, and vocation. Only those who take the teaching as a vocation are sincere, dedicated, loyal, and committed. We have seen in each campus, you see this type of teachers. I have seen teachers, you know, they may have coconut plantation, paddy field, and rubber plantation, and coming in those days, in the 70s, uh, owning a, a small scooter is a big um, social uh, prestige, actually. They will come on a scooter, and inside the campus also, they won't keep quiet. They would run chit fund. I have seen it. They are all not taking it very serious. Take teaching as a problem. Once you are uh, become a teacher, please take it very serious. Be committed, sincere, loyal, and committed. So let me go to the next one. Um, the, our challenge is to convert learner teachers into learning teachers. And how to do that? You can always you can speak volumes of uh, making the students in the make uh, the making the convert. No, sir, excuse me, yeah, excuse yes. me. If yeah. one question, yeah. if an answer uh, late means also okay. Okay. So I put the question yeah. uh, from Bharati Raj. Sir, whatever you said about logical thinkers are exactly right. Are they mitigating improvements of students? Yeah, I said you know it's a good question. Thank you, thank you for asking the question. As I said, the logical thinker may be a great scholar. You know, he knows everything. But there are basic things he may not follow. I have seen, I have seen, I will not name the person. I have seen with my own eyes. You know, they will not even dress properly. And they, they, they will not, their teaching will not be effective at all. Students will get into coma when they can enter the classroom. So what is the use of his, um, the reservoir of knowledge? Yeah. It's of no use. So he has to, if he is 100% logical thinker, he knows everything, not able to profess the knowledge, not able to explain anything in a crystal clear way, a good thing, highly complicated things in a simple language. Highly complicated things can be explained in simple language. For example, I just want to tell you one thing. You know, um, I was a teacher. So can you ask them to mute the microphone and speak? It is. I am being disturbed. I don't know. I am not able to locate the person. The organization. No, with this type of intervention, how can I continue? Can you ask them to mute? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not able to locate the person who is doing it. Yeah. Um, so if um, the, if he is not, you know, if you, I, as I said, teaching for 10 years and worked for UN for 33 years, believe me, I realized that highly complicated things can be understood by asking simple questions. I used to say, what drives world trade? One question why some countries are doing better than others. I have been trying to answer these questions for more than, more than 35 years, ever since I joined the UN. I am still writing on those things. Very simple questions. So if the mode of teaching is not coming through this way to make highly complicated things, uh, in a present highly complicated things in very simple language, intelligible to even ordinary students, 
then he his knowledge is of no use to the students this is what i precisely meant can i continue with my uh, powerpoint present i hope the participant is happy with my answer okay uh, okay sir you can turn it okay make teachers write um, no ah uh, okay we are saying that we have learner teachers learner teachers means they all have degrees msc ma phd everything they all have degrees but they are all learner teachers if they don't continue to learn they are not learning teachers institutions today need learning teachers not learner teachers okay now how to make it in order to do that you should have first a special session on writing isi journal articles i used to organize it for 3 days at the institutions now it is not possible because of the covid syndrome sorry as we it's not possible to do what we used to do we organize it in such a way we tell them writing a scientific article to be recognized by a journal affiliated to isi is not rocket science it is definitely within your capability this is very important to make the teachers realize that it is within your capability you can get the help of two more colleagues there can be three others please follow me three others and then you can get one or two students as a research assistants to collect data using your questionnaire then during the course during the orientation we will just assign a topic to a topic of their choice to each teacher and then first we will ask them to capture the survey of literature for the last 10 years survey of literature related to that particular topic so if you use a very effective uh, search engine not necessarily google very effective search engine within a minute you will get all technical reports available on that topic and then you don't read the entire article it may be boring it may be time consuming read at least abstract abstract of each article relevant article to the chosen topic then take points okay this guy talks about this this guy talks about it and in the survey of literature you have to systematically prove as so many people have said all these things about uh, the <coughs> chosen topic but see look at this i am dealing with this dimension this is not being handled your job is to identify the gap in this global survey of literature that exercise will be done during the orientation and it's possible give them half a day at the end of the, uh, in the afternoon you ask them to make a presentation of the survey of literature they make wonderful presentations and tell them it is within their once the survey of literature is done <coughs> then you have to prepare the questionnaire if you collect primary data there itself it will lend credence to the originality of your article nobody else has done it because you are collecting primary data using your own questionnaire i am sure nobody must have done it that itself bears testimony to the fact that your article is original this is how you have to you have to approach that then you develop the logical sequence of thought either prove or disprove a given hypothesis and then create empirical evidence empirical evidence and then deduce implications for a policy actions based on the research findings it is very simple it is not rocket science it is within your capability you have to realize that all that you have to do is to spend time on it unless the institutions organize it nobody will do that there should be a special session every year giving intensive training to teachers asking them to prepare a model research paper within 3 days following all these instructions i cannot go on because this is done for 3 days so <clears throat> i will just bypass this the what i am saying is it is within your capability normally what i find is everybody knows all the related things related to the subject you know uh, the assistant professor of physics will know everything what he is talking about the only problem is language they may not be able to write <coughs> properly with the grammatically defensible sentences and in a crystal clear way don't worry you create the subject you write everything you can really count on the experience of retired professors you go to a retired if someone a teaching physics wants to write a paper he has created the structure everything he is struggling with the language 
kindly go to this retired the, the physics professor he will be very happy to help you if you pay him a small fee and ask him to put it in a impeccable language and just to recognize this is allowed this is allowed in isa journal articles and then just uh, uh, recognize that the uh, and the <coughs> professional editorial completion was done by uh, this professor i duly acknowledge something like that acknowledge his contribution so if language is many people are not able to write because of the language i know that but this is a non issue you try to come out with something original in your own subject and then language apart leave it to the retired professor and acknowledge his contribution it is accepted and then send it to for peer review blind peer reviews so when you get the peer reviewers comments you should have a thick skin to read those some may bombard it some may say it is totally useless it is uh, out of context and uh, there is lot of inconsistency and there may be <coughs> 40 comments from two peer reviewers now you don't try to address ye all the 40 comments within a day try to answer one comment address one comment per day i think you should be able to do that and when you are able to do that within 40 days you are able to accommodate all the comments of the blind reviewers if you are not able to address the uh, address one question raised by the blind reviewer within a day I, i think i think you are not fit to be a teacher i would say so i am sure you will be able to do that and in 40 days and or in two months you have a paper which has already accommodated the peer reviewers comments and then again go for nice policy and send it back then they may make major few remarks and comment carry out that one the article is ready it is said that a teacher should be able to produce at least one scientific paper per year minimum per year minimum is not the maximum so at least one scientific paper that is enough not more than that i so please attempt that and i have encouraged people like that follow the methodology and i have also requested many institutions to establish an operational mechanism to facilitate this one what is operational mechanism no one lives on moral incentives there should be some material incentives if a lecturer is able to get his article or a group of uh, three lecturers able to get their articles published in an isa journal article the institution should pay them 10000 rupees maybe 5000 rupees the funding is a big problem that incentive system there that's why i said establish an operational mechanism to facilitate the process encourage them to do and also to monitor the progress made by these teachers writing this one so please try to do that by writing a scientific paper related to your subject you certainly learn a lot you learn a lot and you erase your ignorance and that will have its own impact on students so please follow that and the next one having said all these things now actually i am just talking about the impact of such orientation i am not actually doing the orientation here the orientation needs at least 3 days and then everybody will be converted into uh, bright teachers and they will really start working on writing papers research papers it it worked everywhere uh, i cannot think of a single uh, teacher who failed to do that and then um, back to basics there are basic things about teachers you know a mata pita guru deva you know that even teacher comes before god why if the students follow what the teachers are asking them to do they will reach almighty god this is the meaning we believe in that and what the teachers are supposed to do your job is to produce intellectually trained morally upright spiritually inspired and socially committed persons intellectually trained morally upright spiritually inspired and socially committed students this is your job as a teacher of course after leaving the institution they may not maintain consistency in the way intellectually trained may not be morally upright when you hear about the corruption cases of great uh, officers intellectually trained officers then there is no consistency they are not morally upright intellectually trained and morally upright may not be spiritually inspired 
intellectually trained, morally upright, and spiritually inspired may not be socially committed. But this is not your job. Don't worry about it. As long as they are in the campus, your job is to produce intellectually trained, morally upright, spiritually inspired, and socially committed persons. And uh, I can cite many examples. I was in South Sudan uh, for nearly three and a half years working for the UN. I would say the real problem in South Sudan is the political elites. They all studied in great, great institutions. When they come and talk, attend the meetings, you know, peacekeeping meetings, you know, they speak like representatives of Jesus Christ. And after the peace agreement, Tonus committed $10 billion for post-conflict recovery and development, you may not believe, within one year, everything evaporated. Looted, completely looted. Who did it? The political elites. According to my assessment, in South Sudan, the real problem is the political elite. They are intellectually trained, but they are not morally upright, spiritually inspired, and socially committed. It's a big problem. has lost their faith in them. Nobody wants to fund any development-related activities. They are helping uh, some type of humanitarian interventions, but uh, they, they are hesitant to pump more money into this because of large scale. And this is done by highly qualified people. So we have no control on that. Okay. Uh, then, uh, other, another basic thing is commanding a high degree of personal and professional respect in the campus. When you, when you walk around, uh, you know, uh, the corridors and in the campus, uh, from the body language of students and your colleagues and the management, you definitely know how much respect you command as a person and as a professional. Everybody should respect you as a good person, a person imbued with good attitudes and values. And everybody should respect, because you are a teacher. So everybody should respect you as a knowledgeable and competent teacher. And competent and reliable teacher. Some are very competent, not reliable at all. I have seen them. Very competent guys, you know, teachers. But when the management asks them to do something, totally incompetent. Not reliable. Not, not Very competent, but not reliable. Some are very reliable, but totally incompetent. So what is needed is a unique blend of competency and reliability. And then by uh, not making any mistakes, you are not supposed to make major mistakes, you know, the, in front of the students. The moment you make a mistake, uh, naturally you lose their respect, uh, particularly in your language, articulation, you know, when you make too many mistakes uh, in English while teaching and the, it, you become a laughing stock. Try to avoid that, you know, not to make, being, and being neatly dressed is a very, very important one. And uh, my student is, uh, Al Wilson is a witness, and I was very keen on that. At that time, I was earning only uh, 450 rupees plus some DSA. The total amount was 650 rupees. But I was very keen on changing the dress every day, neatly dressed. I was very keen on that. I, I, Wilson, you know that. Huh? And uh, I used to earn money by visiting, <laughs> taking tuition at the rich yes, people's sir. house <laughs> in Nagarkovil. I still remember. I was a hostel warden. I had a bicycle. I used to go to the Mangalathiru. And fortunately, the rich people's sons and daughters were not doing well. They were not studying economics properly. So every time, in the evening, I go and teach them. And they paid me very decently, very fabulously. One family used to give me 800 rupees per month for teaching the son. Another family for teaching the daughter, the son, around 400. So I used to earn at least 3,000 rupees in those days just to spend on good quality dress. I was very keen on that. The, you should, you know, the way you stand in front of the student, neatly dressed me not to put on tie and three-piece full suit, no. Uh, full hand and tucked in shirt. That's all. And the shoe. That's a minimum. You should have that. So please see to it that uh, you are neatly dressed. Once I, I want to narrate this interesting episode. Once I was in those days, uh, Chennai Express used to come, train come, used to come only up to Tirunelveli. So I was traveling. Uh, I was uh, in a compartment and there was somebody sitting with me and we were talking to each other. Then I told him at one point I was teaching in Nagar Kovil. Pioneer Kumar. He said, my son, son studied there. I could not um, recall and I could not recognize him. And then 
when i went back to chennai the same man got into the same compartment and he was sitting with me and he told me i told my son about you and he he immediately said uh, one of the neatly dressed staff members i was overwhelmed you know <laughs> i was very keen on that and it attracted uh, the student so these are all basic things teachers should um, follow then faster creative education that means a uh, creative learning creative teaching or you know is crucial effective means when you are a creative teacher you will make the students re realize the non obvious during the course of teaching so when i was doing the same thing at in another college they asked me immediately what is non obvious i give you a simple example you write uh, two numbers on the board 7 and 8 and you ask the students to say whatever they think about it so 7 plus 8 is 15 18 minus 7 is 1 okay and then like that so many things they said but something was still missing i said there is something still missing what is that the missing element was non obvious thing about the two numbers was one is an odd number another one is an even number so I, this is a very simple example to tell you during the course of teaching see to it that uh, you you make the students realize um, the non obvious and try to inculcate critical thinking critical thinking is very 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 important you know it is there you you reveal your originality now when i was interviewed for a job in the un uh, the chairman of the committee picked up a paper it was in 1980 and the title of the paper was an optimal industrial structure for france projected for the year 1990 and he asked me to just to review the paper and come and see him next week the following week i took the paper from him and i had lot of confidence because the way i was brought up at st joseph's college st xavier's college my great great teachers sharpened my critical thinking critical analytical frame of mind i could write critically and i could do that in you know, at a later stage actually for a long time i was a mediocre at one point i realized that whatever is meant for me is within my capability then i became a serious student winning gold medal in ba economics and raja saranna mali chettiar gold medal from st joseph's college for being the best outgoing student because i became very serious student <coughs> so i was i was freely at ease in writing the comment a review of the article and then when i went and submitted the uh, review my review to him after one week he was reading the page first page second page then while reading the third page he looked at me and said it now makes sense you see then he said yes i was in this is how i got into the un critical mindset is very 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 important and i can give you some examples recently i wrote a book called the poverty of economic thinking where i questioned the economic thinking of all the economists from adam smith to the latest adam smith said the end of production is consumption i say adam smith was wrong in saying that the end of production today is learning when you produce when i produce a product i say this uh, cell phone and then i want to learn from the customers i want to learn from the com comparators i want to learn from the competitors and i want to learn from my uh, distributors i want to learn in order to survive in an internationally competitive environment and to effect further improvements and make my product superior over so the end of production is not consumption the end of production is learning so adam smith was wrong the famous economist uh, ricardo said countries are converting a uh, resource based comparative advantages into competitiveness i said the ricardian theory of comparative advantage is dead today countries are not uh, counting on the resource endowment alone many countries are enhancing competitiveness without resource endowment using human ingenuity as the infinite resource of wealth creation as i said the singapore there is not even a single single resource but they top the list on the scale of industrial performance every year for more than 20 consecutive years how did it come so like that and then john maynard keynes uh, while um, uh, trying to recover the american economy from the great depression of 1930s he said we should not worry about uh, long term 
uh, we should try to address short term issues then i say don maynard keynes was wrong because uh, he said in the long run we are dead but nations never die in the long run nations never die in the long we should have a long term vision and mission so it is said that vision without action is a day dream action without vision is a nightmare what is needed is a vision and mission <coughs> vision and action and uh, making optimistic claims about the future this is very important so if you have a critical mindset you and i will i will send the soft copy to my student uh, uh, dr wilson you can freely distribute it to everybody every uh, the, particularly the students of economics and commerce would read i am questioning systematically empirically with the evidence i am disproving all the wonderful ideas of great economists from adam smith to the latest it's called poverty of economic thinking i hope that will be helpful and make them think critically and then individually and collectively you know co collaborate to compete is the new industrial theology so it is important that people should think collectively if you think collectively if you establish in the collective um, the response to withstand competitive pressures for efficiency gains you really survive in a, in the business world the sharpen students analytical frame this is all, i have already said that eh? okay these are all the things a teacher is supposed to do and be positive here this is the most important thing a teacher should be really very positive in the sense he is supposed to look at only the positive aspects of the student each student and ignore the negative things and the teacher's attitude towards the uh, student should further strengthen the positive qualities of the that student and thereby the teacher will contribute to the personality formation of that student i will give you one example you know when i was in the school i was a mediocre i didn't know how did i pass okay when i did my pre university and my father was very keen it's a typical uh, situation in kanyakumari everybody wants uh, the son and daughter to become doctors you know that and uh, he wanted uh, me to join biology for pre university thinking that uh, i could go to the medical college then uh, i didn't study well and i was a mediocre in fact i still remember what happened during the chemistry exam when i was in the lolly hall lebo Audi uh, lebo auditorium it, it was lebo auditorium in sensebis college palayamata when the question paper was distributed i was the only cool character i received the question paper started writing all my classmates were perplexed in a perplexed mood they were breaking their head some of them were tearing their question paper into pieces i saw that disturbance i did not mind i i wrote after the examination i asked my classmates so when the question paper was distributed you were all uh, in a perplexed mood eh? beating uh, the head like this and you were in a very very bad mood and uh, why what happened he said oh, you don't know what is i said i have no idea he said 80% of the questions were out of syllabus i didn't know even the syllabus that was the state of affairs i was not so eventually since 80% of the questions uh, were out of syllabus the board of the examiners gave 40% moderation everybody passed i also passed even with the 40% i got only third class so i was not technically qualified to join any science subject so i was pushed into economics uh, first year in in the first year also i was not doing very well one day um the for the elements of common six am i just went to the railway station tirunelveli railway station and purchased a moor market bazaar notebook on elements of commerce i just read that bazaar notebook for 2 hours and then when i sat for the exam in the examination hall i gained the feeling i could write all the five questions answers for the five questions i felt very comfortable i spent only 2 hours uh, preparing for the exam and then Uh, they said answer three out of five, but I wanted to write the answer for five questions. I knew all the uh, answers. Then I wrote the answers for three questions. Then after one week, when the lecturer distributed the mark sheet, I stood first in the class, forty-six out of fifty. I was overwhelmed, and that was the turning point in my life. I went back to the hostel, Brito Hostel, and reflected on it, and I just told myself I realized two things. whatever is prescribed for me is definitely within my capability number 2 all that i need to do is to spend time two hours 
Then I threw all the Basar notebook, everything. I became a very serious student. I must have put in at least 18 hours a day, believe me. In the evening, and those days, they used to keep the library open for 24 hours. So I used to go. In the classroom, I used to take notes in my broken English. And then uh, I used to go and uh, uh, take at least five original books written by foreign authors for each chapter, which uh, topic taught on that day, and prepare essay of my own. In those days, we could not cut and paste. So manually copy one sentence from here, one paragraph. Like that, like that, I did it, spending time. Then within a month, I, I felt intellectually better off. Within three months, I was freely at ease. And you know, I started uh, writing very well. And everybody, particularly for Vice Principal Oswald, used to, Reverend Father Oswald used to tell me, there's a change in you, dramatic change in you. What happened? So I was completely transformed. Then I started, uh, I had, didn't have confidence. Uh, I could not write one grammatically def defensible sentence in English at that time. Then one professor, a positive word said by uh, one professor made a major breakthrough in my life. One day, Professor Albert, and he's a brother of Mr. Balamburi John, uh, who passed away, and a former MD, uh, he, he was staying in the campus. I just was walking in front of his quarters. He called me Jabamalai. He, I went to him with a lot of fear and respect. And he said, I read your composition, not bad. Believe me, he did not say it was fantastic. He did not say it was uh, superb. He just said, my God, Professor Albert for me was a Milton and Shakespeare. Brilliant teacher. And I told myself, oh, my Professor Albert is appreciative of my language, English composition. When he said, not bad, so I can also write, I can also speak. Like that, I started developing. And the second year BA, I was, uh, I, I was almost, uh, I positioned myself. Third year, I was the best student. And I got, in those days, I, there was only one university in Tamil Nadu, University of Madras, not many universities. Uh, Karnamari University was also there. And um, in the whole university, there were only five first classes and I won one of them and got a gold medal. And again, in um, B, MA Economics, I got uh, uh, the best outgoing uh, student award at Raja Saranamala Chetiyarma. That boosted me. So when you look at my case study, it's a matter of realizing, making the students realize that uh, it, whatever they are supposed to study is definitely within their capability and make them realize that all that they have to do is to spend the time. They have to spend time. And then on the part of the teachers, look at the positive things and rekindle as Professor Albert did in my case.